Hi there guys, it's Grace here again and this is going to be an activity video which is the second part of the Frida Kahlo activity videos that I'm making. So there'll be three in total, this is the second one. Uh, so you might have done the first activity, uh, if you didn't, no worries. If you do want to know a bit more about Frida Kahlo and who she was before starting this activity, I suggest you go and watch the beginning of uh, my first video, just so that you can learn a little bit about her background. But if not, then that's totally fine and we can just do the activity anyway. Now, you might need a hand from someone at a few points during this activity, just because there are a few elements to it, which might be a little bit difficult to do on your own. The tea is going to be again inspired by one of Frida Kahlo's paintings. So I'm going to put a picture of it right here. Um, and this painting is one called Living Nature. So in the painting, we can see a few different still images. Uh, of natural objects that have been assembled. There's a sun and a moon, and one half of the painting is day and the other half is night. There are a number of fruits, there's a bird, um, some different foods, and they're all connected to the soil by the roots. Um, and you can see that the roots spell out something. The words spell out something in Spanish, which is the language that they speak in Mexico, which is where Frida Kahlo is from, and they spell out naturaleza viva. So for this activity, we're going to be taking inspiration from the idea of living nature. To gather materials for this activity, you're actually going to need to go outside. You might want to go out to a garden if you've got one. Uh, you might want to go on a walk to a green space nearby if you have that. If you don't, I would just suggest going down the street and seeing if you can take small amounts of things off any plants uh, or any trees that you find. A couple of rules that you need to follow for this activity to work, okay? So, first of all, it can only be natural materials. So that's things which grow, uh, things which are from nature. So don't pick up any like crisp packets or chocolate packets or whatever that isn't allowed <laughs> um so that's the first rule uh, the second one is that when you're going out make sure you're being safe if you can take someone with you or speak to someone before you go out especially if you're going on a walk you know make sure they're cool with that um and the third one is just make sure that what you pick is clean um, and really try not to uh, pick any blooming flowers. Uh, try not to take very much of anything. Dead or dying plants are kind of the best uh, for this activity. Um, so we're really trying not to damage the outside world, world at all when we take materials. I went out for a walk earlier with Hobie the dog and I picked a few materials as I went to my local park. Um, when you're picking materials, I want you to look for nice bright colors, if you can. Um, interesting shapes, mix of shapes, a mix of textures. So that's the way that things feel. So we want a mixture, mixture of textures. And I'm just gonna show a little bit of footage of when I went out collecting earlier and the kind of things that I chose. So I've just taken the dog next door for a walk <laughs> and I'm also looking for some things to pick for my artwork. So I found some rose hips here uh, and I'm going to pick a few of these. got some nice orange leaves here, so uh, these are definitely dead. So I think it's okay to take these off the tree, they're a very bright colour, so that's why I'm choosing them. I'm going to take just a few of these catkins too. Obviously not too many, and I want to make sure that I don't damage the plant, the tree, when I take them. So, thank you tree. <laughs> Got a few more brownish dead flowers here, so I'm going to take a couple of those. Something like this, which is a primrose that's growing in the wild, I definitely wouldn't want to pick. So, I have the things here uh, that I chose on my walk. So I've shown you them already, but I've got crunchy brown dead leaves. I've got
got some catkins that I took a few of these off the tree, not too many. I've got some rose hips, nice bright red. I actually also have some dead flowers. Uh, I had a vase of flowers and some of the heads were dying, so I took them off to use in this. Uh, if you have anybody who's willing to give you some old dead flowers, then you could do that too. Uh, and then I've also got these things that I picked, the seed heads. We're going to be putting these things together uh, to make a still life. Uh, to make a, a kind of natural artwork um, using all of these different objects from nature. So if you have a plastic bowl, even better, a silicon lid thing, um, unlikely that you have one of these, but this is even better for this. You could also use a tin, uh, really just something which you're able to hold water in, okay? Um, if you don't have that, uh, then this is actually fine to just do outside and you can kind of arrange the materials outside, let it be an artwork that exists and then disappears, because uh, that's kind of what this is going to be, the way that I'm going to do it. You can do your own version. Just have a look at how I do it and see what works best for you. So I am going to arrange all of these objects so that I like the way that they look together. This is how I've placed all of my natural objects within my plastic bowl thingy. Uh, so I'm now going to take my water jug and I'm going to pour this over so it fills right up to the top. Doesn't matter if things float around. Uh, but yes, right, 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 right up to the top. So I'm just making sure that all of my natural objects are in the water and touching the water. Um, there's something really satisfying about this, actually. Um, and it's also really nice that I got all of these things from outside and I took my time in choosing them. And I'm really pleased with the way that they all look because they're all things that caught my eye. Now that you've got this, um, or you might have just arranged uh, on a surface outside, um, if you've done the water version, you're gonna have to pop it in the freezer. <laughs> so see if you can ask if you can have some space to do it, be really careful with it. It obviously can quite easily spill. If you're putting it in the freezer, then you need to do that and wait for it to freeze. Uh, so I'm gonna put this in the freezer now and then I'll come back and show you when it's frozen. It's gonna take about three or four hours to freeze. So you might wanna leave it overnight, come back to this tomorrow or, or you know, wait three or four hours. Morning guys. So I left mine to set overnight and I just wanna show you. I actually made two uh, cause I had quite a lot of stuff. So I wanted to use um, the other stuff up as well got a few of my things captured in this I see still life um, so you can see the rose hips there really clearly this is my big I see art so the beautiful thing about both of these is that I can go and put them outside and let them melt and they won't harm the outside world at all um, these can just go back to nature this activity which is inspired by living nature by Frida Kahlo and I might see you for the third activity that uh, will be coming up after this so yeah hope you've enjoyed and hope you've enjoyed making this uh, this artwork